What's up everybody? My name is Austin and today we're going to be taking a look at seven more NBA players whose talents have vanished. For the first seven players, there's a link in the description, so go check that out if you haven't already. But for now, we're going to be taking a look at these seven players and what may have caused their talents to vanish or just take a huge step down. So let's get started. Number seven, Ty Lawson. Ty Lawson was a star in college, and I carried over to the NBA because he quickly improved every year and became a great point guard. He'd show up every year in the playoffs and would lead the Denver Nuggets in points, assists, and steals, averaging nearly 18 points and 9 assists per game in 2013 and 14. Although he was never really considered a top 10 point guard in the league, he was becoming one of the Nuggets franchise players. That was until his off-court issues started catching up to him. He's been arrested five separate times for drinking and driving or reckless driving. And with two of those times being in 2015, the Nuggets decided to trade him to the Houston Rockets. In his last season with the Nuggets, he was averaging 15 points and nearly 10 assists per game. And in his first season with the Rockets, he only averaged five points and three assists. A big part of this was due to him still getting used to the new team and because the Rockets were making him come off the bench. So since switching teams and his off-court issues, he's never really been the same player and still isn't today at 29 years old. Number six, Luol Deng. Luol Deng was a two-time NBA All-Star and played a big part in helping the Chicago Bulls make deep runs in the playoffs for many years. He was the second option on a Bulls team led by Derrick Rose, and often became the first option when Rose was injured. He was a great defender and averaged nearly 17 points per game in his time with Chicago. He started the 2013 and 14 season averaging 19 points per game for the Bulls before they traded him to the Cleveland Cavaliers for Andrew Bynum so they could clear cap space. Dang was never the same player since this trade. His averages would drop at Cleveland and at Miami where he'd later sign. In 2016 and 17, he'd sign with the Lakers where he'd only average 7 points per game in 56 games played and was shut down for the rest of the season in March so the Lakers young players could play. Luol, at only 32 years old, hasn't even been close to the same player he was since getting traded from Chicago. Luol didn't have a choice, but this is another case of how a player leaving their main team that they were drafted by can really hurt their career. Number 5. Jeremy Lin Now this is an obvious pick because everyone remembers how Jeremy Lin and Lin Sanity started. And if you don't, well, he exploded on the scene faster than the Kool-Aid man. After bouncing around the NBA in the D-League, Lin finally got an opportunity to start for the New York Knicks in 2011. In his first four starts, he averaged 27 points, 8 assists, and 2 steals, then hit a game-winning 3 with .5 seconds left against the Raptors. Lin's sanity had begun, and it looked like there was no stopping Jeremy Lin. He played insanely well, getting praise from every sports station and players like LeBron James and Carmelo Anthony. Kobe Bryant said he didn't know who Lin was, so Jeremy outscored Kobe by putting up 38 points against him. He finished the season averaging 14 points, 6 assists, and almost 2 steals a game. He's bounced around several teams since then, and if you compare his stats by season, they're all pretty much the same, but if you compare him now to how he started with the Linsanity, you can definitely say that that moment of great talent has vanished. Number 4. Joe Kim Noah Along with formerly mentioned Luol Deng, Joe Kim Noah was also a second or third option on a Bulls team that often made it deep into the playoffs. He was a two-time NCAA champion, and he was also a two-time NBA All-Star and a one-time Defensive Player of the Year. Noah could do it all. He could pass, shoot, rebound, play on the inside and mid-range, and play the pick and roll game. He was never known for really having high scoring games. He was known for doing a good amount of everything, rebounding, blocking shots, making passes, and scoring when needed. He won the Defensive Player of the Year award in 2014, and two seasons later, his play quickly declined when he lost his starting spot to Nikola Mirotic and Pau Gasol. He only played 29 games that year due to injuries and averaged 4 points a game. The next season, the Knicks overpaid and gave Noah a 4-year, $72 million contract. And between getting suspended and more injuries, Noah would only play 46 games and average 5 points a game. He went from a top center in the league to not even breaking double digits in any category within a couple of years. Number 3. Lamar Odom Lamar Odom was one of the league's most exciting all-around players. He was a two-time NBA champion and sixth man of the year. He averaged 16 points, 8 rebounds, and 4 assists in his rookie year and averaged close to the same stats on the Clippers and Heat and saw a slight decline of his stats when joining the Lakers. But that was okay because he accepted a role off the bench that helped the Lakers win an NBA championship. 
He played less minutes, but his quality of play didn't decline. His play did decline though, after he was supposed to be in a trade for Chris Paul that never went through. He felt betrayed and demanded a trade, and was traded to the Dallas Mavericks. He never looked the same since then, he didn't play with effort and he had off-court issues. His stats dropped from 14 points and 8 rebounds a game to 6 points and 4 rebounds a game. He went on to play worse for the Clippers and really never recovered. He said that the trade from the Lakers basically ended his career and purpose, and that he was never really himself again. Number 2. Josh Smith Josh Smith was a player that came straight out of high school and played the best basketball of his career for the Atlanta Hawks. He consistently averaged nearly 16 points per game and at his best season, averaging almost 19 points, 10 rebounds, and 4 assists. He was known as a player that could fill the stat sheet in every category and he did just that. He signed with the Detroit Pistons in 2013 and his play declined a little but remained consistent. At only 28 years old, he was waived by the Pistons and signed with the Rockets and he now only averaged 12 points, 6 rebounds, and 2 assists a game. The next season in 2015 and 16, he played for the Clippers and the Rockets again and only averaged 6 points per game. So this found him his way out of the league and now he's played in China since 2016. This is just another example of how leaving one of your main teams that made you successful can be a bad move. Also it shows how changing teams too often can ruin a player's rhythm just like we saw earlier on the list and in the last video. Number 1 Monte Ellis Monte Ellis was another player to come straight out of high school. He averaged 6 points a game as a rookie, but won the Most Improved Player Award in 2007 after bumping his averages up to almost 17 points per game in his sophomore season. It didn't stop there because he'd continued to improve and be teamed up with Steph Curry. And in 2010, he'd averaged an outstanding 25 points, 5 assists, and 4 rebounds a game, but shockingly never be an all-star. He'd leave the Warriors and sign with the Bucks, then the Mavericks, where he continuously averaged 19 points a game for both teams. He'd sign with the Pacers in 2015, where he'd average only 13 points a game, never really being able to find his rhythm playing with Paul George. His stats would drop even lower when he'd take on a bench role for most of the 2016 and 17 season, and eventually get waived due to his averages dropping to 8 points, 2 rebounds, and 3 assists per game. Hopefully he'll find a new team in the league soon to get his career back on track, because he's only 31 years old. And this has been seven more NBA players whose talents have vanished. Now I didn't necessarily forget any players because there was the first one of these videos, this one's the second, and there'll be future videos of players whose talents have vanished. So definitely comment on what you thought about these seven players and comment who you think you'll be seeing in the next video or any suggestions that you might have. Thanks for watching. Subscribe.